This is the XO Podcast, brought to you by Mayor Today. I'm your host, Brent Evans, and with me today, again, and always, is Sean Reed and Caitlin Edwards. Welcome back to the podcast, guys. Hey. Good to be here. Appreciate you having us here. Yeah, you're, you're <laughs> welcome. We're fired up, man. <laughs> <laughs> We're talking about uh, the four foundational laws of marriage today. This is actually one of my favorite topics in marriage. Uh, it's a teaching that my dad does from his Marriage on the Rock uh, book and audio and video series. And this is, for me, I've been married for 20 years, one of those things where I can't keep this in my brain enough. I Mm -hmm. need to have these always, like, almost tattooed on my body because when I forget about these laws, I inevitably have these struggles in my marriage that once I go back and focus on these foundational truths, things just start going right again. Yeah. Mm. No matter where you are in your relationship, it's helpful to remember. I can hear your dad talk about it a million times. It's still helpful. Still helpful. And it's easy to remember. They all start with P. Letter P. Yep. It's like a Sesame Street episode. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, no, so the four foundational laws, we're just going to be talking today about priority, pursuit, possession, and purity. Mm-hmm. And a lot of these stem from Genesis, uh, the scripture, and, and talking uh, about Adam and Eve and the relationship in the garden. And my dad kind of unpacks all these in his teaching. But t- coming up today, we actually have an interview with Jeff and Liz Jones, who have been teaching these principles at the Gateway Church here where we go. And they've been helping couples build a successful foundation and uh, and being able to understand these things and p- apply them in their marriage. They've just seen a tremendous growth in their groups and their couples. And so we'll be talking to them upcoming in the next segment. So priority, pursuit, possession, purity, these are major things. They're laws. So my dad says this, you know, the law of gravity, you can't ignore the law of gravity. Right. Mm-hmm. And when we fall in love and we get married, there's this pursuit that happens, Right. Right, you're on your best behavior. And best you behavior. look nice all the time. And for guys, it's it's almost you know there's there's a there's a game an art form to it. You're just Absolutely. pursuing this person. You're wanting to to get their attention. You're wanting to get their love, mm-hmm. and you're you're wanting to do all these things. And you give so much energy, and then you get married. Right, the chase is up. done because mm-hmm. because you've caught what you were going after. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? You have the prize, and so what it what has to happen for guys, we have to realize that there's a new hunt. There's a new uh, pursuit. And it's not just to obtain the, the prize of the wife, but now it's to go after her heart mm-hmm. and to learn more and more and more about the deep things about her personality. How can you reach her emotionally? Right. So it's kind of a different game that mm-hmm. needs to be played. Mm-hmm. Um, and so if we don't kind of turn that switch of maturity on to say, OK, now it's time for the next level. Then all of a sudden that pursuit begins to dissipate and we'll look for things in other places. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah, and then uh, the next law is possession, the law of possession. And you're talking about, you know, you're going into marriage, you want to make sure that everything is on the table, mm-hmm. that there's not a mine in there, right. that you're sharing everything in life. It's it's not just uh, the sharing of a home or finances, but sharing of each other's lives. Yeah. Uh, children, if you have them. Children, it's, yeah. all, it's all in. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and so if you have a blended family, Instead of it being your kid, my kid, it's our children, right? Mm-hmm. Sharing bank accounts, finance, and everything else like that together. Do you see yourselves as one in every aspect of your life? So mm-hmm. I think it's profound. It's great. And then pursuit is, uh, I'm sorry, priority is the next one, mm-hmm. the law of priority. And do you put your spouse to the top of the list? I mean, God's first, and then really it's your marriage. If you mm-hmm. don't have a priority of marriage, and it's so easy in our society now to have yeah. a situation <clears throat> where kids mm-hmm. work, work. All of a sudden, I spend more hours, you know, at work and my focus and my attention and my drive is to be the best at work. And then Mm -hmm. I come home and give little to no effort. Yeah, you're depleted. Yeah, absolutely. And so, you know, the spouse eventually is going to feel like they're being either shoved to the side. They're not as important. That's going to cause trouble in paradise, Um, as well as Mm -hmm. in-laws. My goodness. Uh, Whose house we're going to go over? How much influence do they have over how you raise your children or so on and so forth? Right. Um, is your spouse number one in mm-hmm. your in your life aside from God, or are all of these other determining factors uh, having more influence than your spouse? It can even be good things, yeah, that that, that come out of priority. I mean, mm-hmm. right, or from a good place. Mm-hmm. You want to make money, so you want to strive hard at work because you want to care for your family, and that's a right priority. But it's just misplaced. Or ministry. A lot of people are involved mm-hmm. in ministry or mm-hmm. community efforts, and their hearts in the right place. They want to help, but then they end up putting their marriage on the back burner. Yeah, it's not a priority. And so the last one is the law of purity. And in marriage, um, we want to bring everything to the marriage that we can. We want it to be pure, right? Yeah. And, and that's not always, always just about sex. A lot of times it's about other things uh, that you want to make sure that you're just coming from a pure place. You're opening mm-hmm. your heart to your spouse 
and you're sharing everything with them and you want to be able to share that in an environment where it's pure mm -hmm. yeah. vulnerability mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. all of that. Yeah, absolutely. But I mean, it can be, you know, sometimes, I mean, if I have a gambling habit, you know, and I get to a place to where I'm constantly, constantly using money from the home to support this gambling habit, then eventually that's going to be destructive for the whole home, you know, or other issues that may happen. So it's not always sexual, but there are other areas of our lives where we can kind of allow or tolerate certain things that need to be healed. And all of a sudden, if we don't address it, the house starts falling apart, yeah, right? Absolutely. So that's what we're talking about today on the podcast. We have an interview coming up with Jeff and Liz Jones. You don't want to miss it. It's an excellent picture of what they're doing real life on they're doing this every week at gateway church helping couples understand these principles and putting them into practice you don't want to miss it also every week we talk about date box and these are our partners our friends they're doing this uh, great service for couples out there where they have a monthly subscription service it's a new box that comes every week or sorry every month to you mm -hmm. uh something new a lot of times it's about cooking or activities or something that you can do with your spouse they pre-produce everything for you so it comes it's ready to go you have a date night so every month it comes to you, if you use the promo code XOPodcast, go to getdatebox.com, use the promo code XOPodcast, you get your first month for free. All you have to do is pay $5 for shipping, and you get that right to you. Every month it comes to you, you don't have to do anything else. It just gets you in the habit of having date night. It's mm -hmm. good stuff. I you love it. You be creative, too. So go to getdatebox.com, and we'll be right back. In the laws of marriage, the first law is the law of priority. For this cause, a man shall leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife. Okay, leave, this is the word leave in the Hebrew. It just means let go of. You're not mean to them. You don't abuse them. It just means your mom and dad, the most important thing in your life before you got married, now has to have another priority. You've got to reprioritize your life to be married. Marriage only works in first place. And if there's any sense of competition, there cannot be intimacy. Here's what it means. If I have to compete with anything to be first in your life, I will not be able to be intimate with you the way that we're supposed to be intimate. I can't compete. This, this is Genesis 2, 24 and 25. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. And they were both naked, the man and his wife, and they were not ashamed. Well, how do we know that that wasn't only spoken to Adam and Eve because they didn't have a mother. Adam and Eve didn't have a mother. It says, for this cause a man shall leave his father and mother and shall cleave unto his wife. They too shall become one flesh. The man and his wife were both naked and they were not ashamed. And so God created marriage in this wonderful, intimate environment and he created these laws to protect intimacy, to promote and protect intimacy in marriage. This is the EXO Podcast, and we're here with Jeff and Liz Jones, and they have been a part of the podcast before. Last week, they were with us talking about crisis and marriage. They have a program at Gateway Church in South Lake, Texas called Marriage 911. They help a lot of couples out who've gone through infidelity issues or other crisis moments, and they've been a part of the podcast last week. Please check that out. It was an excellent interview, but this week, we're talking about something different. Welcome back, Jeff and Liz. Thank you. And we're talking about the four foundational laws of marriage. My dad does a teaching in his Marriage on the Rock um, seminar about the four foundational laws of marriage, and it's one of my favorite teachings he does because it makes a lot of sense. And in, I've been married for almost 20 years. I still have to remind myself about these laws because they are pervasive, that you cannot get away from these things. They're universal for everybody. And what y'all have done with these truths is put them into a curriculum and use that at Gateway Church mm -hmm. to help couples thrive in their marriage. So please talk about, and Liz, you did uh, a lot of the work. I don't want to cut Jeff out of the mix, but I know a lot of the writing of this curriculum that you did, mm -hmm. and you've, you're the, one of the pastors at Gateway in the marriage department, but you both teach the material. So mm -hmm. welcome back to the podcast, and please uh, talk about what y'all are doing with the, the four foundational laws. It's actually my favorite thing, I think, that I've done um, outside of the crisis um, quadrant of what I do. And really the challenge, I think, when you're in the marriage department are couples in getting them in to enrich, to grow their marriage, to deepen their bond. It's easy to get them in the pre-marriage to, to get ready for marriage or when they're in crisis. But what does it look like to get people jazzed up? And the analogy is a car that 
is not running well when somebody takes it to the mechanic and he says, you're not putting oil in the engine mm -hmm. and you leave, you don't put oil in the engine, you go back because it's worse and he says, well, did you put oil in the engine? And if you continue that cycle, finally the mechanic goes, don't bring your car back. I can't help you. Mm -hmm. Well, I kind of see that's what God says about the four foundations of marriage. Not that I can't help you, but I did not design marriage to work apart from these foundational principles. And I, I didn't give you marriage without telling you how to do it. A loving father wouldn't do that. So we have to, like you said, pervasively, it's, they're, they're always going to be there. We're always looking at it and evaluating our marriage based on these four foundations. And if you're struggling, I would, I would suspect you could look at and find one or all four where you are probably missing the mark and make some adjustments outside of a major crisis and get things back on track. Mm -hmm. Well, it's, it's funny because when we were, we taught the first class last week, and, um, and this is a class that continues to repeat, but... The, what we said to them when they were there is, because you're in this class, it means you're at a crossroads. You're either at the crossroads of something's not working right and you're trying to go and, and do something to make your marriage better, or you're at a different crossroads that just says, I wanna go from good to great. And, and these foundational laws are so important to either one, whether your marriage is in trouble or you just want it to be better. And mm -hmm. you realize that, that God has given you this limitless ability to have an amazing marriage and you just have to tap into his power. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about the, the four laws. I want you to tell them, our audience, what they are, and then just briefly touch on each one and uh, kind of give everyone an idea of the essence of those laws and how you think it fits into a marriage. Um, so talk about that. Priority, you said the first class, so what we mean is the first law, that is Genesis 2 and 3, where God says to leave and cleave, and leave is take that priority that you once gave, um, what God commanded to your parents, and that first place of respect and honor now gets transferred over to your spouse. And um, prioritizing your spouse um, in the way you walk out life every day, and the, the, the takeaway for me in writing this was, if you love God and you want to keep his commands, and you believe you're right on track and God and I are great, but my marriage isn't and I'm not prioritizing my, then you and God aren't. Because if you love God, his first command is to prioritize in the marriage and the law of priorities is you will be prioritizing your spouse. Mm -hmm. You can't skip and go, oh, but I'm a great mom and I have a great um, involvement at work and community. And if, you know, I told them last week, I said, I think the Bible talks about these things burning up, you know, like straw in a fire because he's going to look first at your marriage and stop you there. Mm -hmm. But I think one of the things that Jimmy teaches is that, you know, you're the, the most important relationship you have is with God and your personal relationship with him. And the second most important relationship you have is with your spouse. And that has to be your number two priority. And if you put work or children or hobbies, and we allow life to get in the way. And, and sometimes I, you know, remember the tree of good and evil is the same tree. And so sometimes you can say, wow, I'm doing these great things. I'm serving at church and I'm coaching kids little league and I'm doing all these good things, but I'm neglecting my mm -hmm. wife. Then you are not in the right priority. Mm -hmm. Well, and the second priority, I mean, the second law would be um, pursuit, which is pretty self-explanatory. I think people get that pretty well. You know, do what you did first. You know, it, it's done, it didn't just come natural. Let's look at what we were doing. It wasn't just great chemistry. Um, the third one, and to me, this was the most challenging because I didn't get possession. What is the law of possession? It just so really digging into it was exciting for me in writing this because it just opened up this whole understanding about this isn't just about our our our, our kids, our money, our possessions. This is about do we share because uh, we are body, soul, and spirit. Do we share our emotions and our feelings with each other freely? Do we withhold parts of ourselves from one another? Because that means everything that we own, we share and co-jointly own together as individuals still. But I'm not going to withhold anything, not just money, but I'm going to share. If you've hurt my feelings, I need to respectfully let you know. If I'm having something inside that doesn't feel right in the marriage, I need to take that responsibility to come to you and let you know. That's shared possession. That's hiding nothing. Because really the possession is not nearly as much about the stuff as it is about the, like Liz said, the emotions and, and you know, the, the, those where our strongholds can get in the way mm -hmm. of, of not being, you know, my fear of rejection really hindered my ability to let Liz into those places. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't until I learned that I was safe and it was okay. And I didn't need to have that fear that I was able to do that. Right. And then 
Bob was controlling, which isn't, sh that's not shared power. So that's not equally sharing the power in the marriage. And then the fourth law uh, is purity. And simply put, it's not just sexually. People always think sexual purity, but this is really referring to any area of sin in your life that is not submitted to um, the, under, under the authority of Jesus is going to affect your marriage. Mm -hmm. It's an open door of sin. Any of them are going. And that's why we refer and equate it to nakedness and like nakedness. Well, because we, when Adam and Eve sinned, they covered mm -hmm. their nakedness. So really it's about inviting you to quit covering your sin, bringing it in the light, not having any areas of sin that we need to cover. Yeah, there's so many things in marriage that can be... Um, Sinful that you think are harmless, but end up becoming huge issues in your mm -hmm. in your in your marriage. Um, even laziness sometimes can mm -hmm. become uh, an issue in your marriage, or gossip, or whatever it is uh, that affects the st stability of the relationship. Or, or things like control and complacency, like we mm -hmm. mentioned a minute ago. Those are things that can get in the way of that. Mm -hmm. And you had you had asked us last week about you know in our story and about marriage on the rock and how important that book was to our recovery, but. It's the guts of that book that's so important to any marriage, and that's why I encourage anyone, no matter what place they are in their marriage, to come and really study these four principles because those are the things that God designed to make your marriage work. And and I, and I love when Liz says that God didn't design our marriages to work without these laws. Mm -hmm. It's good. So in our American society and our culture, uh, are couples grasping these truths and taking hold of them, or, or, or one is one law more difficult for them to understand? I would think the possession would be because of giving up your, your side of things. I think it is originally, um, but when we start to break it down, because I used many resources that I had grown really as my favorites, like maybe five additional resources and authors to support what Pastor Jimmy Evans has put in place. But this past week we were teaching, <laughs> I love this, this past weekend on a priority. I said at the end, and we get comments like this all the time, people that will say, gosh, you know, being able to go one hour and 15 minutes in this area, we it gives us time to really dive in. And they said, we, we just have never heard it this way before where we actually just really understand why each of these are so important. And, and at the and, end- Well, in each of these classes, there's, there's there's the opportunity for couples to interact yeah. and to open up. And that's where this story came Well, out. they interact and then we have group, large group time and then couples break a couple different times to have some processing time together. And so at the end, I said, so how was this for everybody? This was the first one. We hope you'll be back the next three. In fact, we, you know, it's, there's not one, there's four principles here. And they were sharing an area of where maybe they hadn't been placing their spouse as a priority. We were asking mm -hmm. them to evaluate and then confess to each other. So at the end, I said, so how was this? <laughs> this man raised his hand and I said, yeah, how was it? And he says, like drinking vinegar. <laughs> 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 but you know, I said, I love that. I love that you're sharing that because I said, when you're drinking vinegar, it's really humility. Mm -hmm. And I said, when Jeff is humble with me and very in his humble stance, he's never more attractive to me. And there's a real quick story when I was <clears throat> working really hard on these about a year ago and I had a lot of things going on. I'd had surgery, I couldn't use my right hand, I had a daughter getting married. There was a lot happening in our lives and I was kind of behind a deadline. And I had told Jeff, okay, we had gone out of town so I could work on these and we were gonna go to lunch. I'd promised him at a certain time and blew way past that deadline and realized that I did. And I came in trying to minimize and rationalize, hey, so you ready to go? And boy, I got a lot done. And I could tell he was a little quiet. And he said, hey, I need to tell you something. I'm not feeling much of like a priority to you. And I was like, <gasps> you know, my first instinct was to go, well, do you know how busy, how that's, you're so selfish. How could you say that? And I just quieted myself because what I realized, you know, first, hey, I'm, I, I'm writing the principle of priority and my husband doesn't feel like a priority. <laughs> Very but, ironic. I think that's the definition, Isn't right? that something? <laughs> but what I realized is, and I think the Holy Spirit stilled me, was that, you know, hey, this isn't about today. If you were doing a better job foundationally about mm -hmm. making him feel like a priority or letting him believe he was one, he would have had a lot more grace today than he did. And for me, that was practicing the law of possession. And that was so hard for me, knowing how hard she'd worked, but but to tell her really how I felt mm -hmm. and not just to stuff it and to pretend it wasn't there and to rub some dirt on it, it'll go away, but to be vulnerable and, and let her know that that's another one of those laws. And so we're trying to put those into place and it was hard for me too. Mm, that's good. 
We are a gold mine of resources for marriage, and um, I'm so thankful you are part of the podcast today and the, and the last episode. If anybody wants to get a hold of your teaching on the, the four foundational laws, because it's based upon my dad's teaching, mm-hmm. but you've actually written the, a separate curriculum to go along with it. Mm-hmm. If anybody has information about that or what y'all are doing at Gateway, tell them where to go. Marriage at gatewaypeople.com. Perfect. Email us there, and they will get to our team, and we will get back with you with whatever you're needing. Well, if you're in the Dallas area, I encourage you to check out Gateway Church in South Lake, Texas with Jeff and Liz. Uh, Please check out the resources, marriage at gatewaypeople.com. Thank you, Jeff and Liz, for being a part of the podcast. Thank you. Well, I've got some good news for you, and that is you have a 100% chance of success in marriage. A 100% chance. with the strongest marriages, they aren't the ones that never had a reason to give up. They're the ones who just refuse to give up. God is still in the business of raising dead things and bringing them back to life. You're not just going to stay married forever. You're going to stay married happily ever after. And that's what we believe when we say that your family has a bright future. Join Jimmy and Karen Evans for the XO 2018 Marriage Conference. Visit exomarriage.com. I have found some interesting facts about marriage. Some of these facts came from imom.com. They gave a list of uh, interesting marriage facts. But the first one they offer is due to jobs, kids, TV, the internet, hobbies, and home and family responsibilities, the average married couple spends just four minutes mm. a day alone together. That's I don't true. think they're counting Netflix and chill or just watching Netflix together. They're alone, looking at each other, conversation, average of four minutes a day. Mm. Goodness. It's devastating. It's pretty crazy. Yeah, buddy. You have to carve out that time or choose to turn the TV off. The next one is that approximately $6 billion in revenue is lost by American businesses as a result of decreased worker productivity linked to marriage hardship. But employees in happy marriages tend to increase a company's bottom line. So people are carrying their family issues into the workplace, whether positive or negative. But I think it's interesting if you're a business owner, investing in the marriages of your employees Mm. increases your own bottom line. Wow. Which that was interesting. It's true. The next stat is that marriage does more to promote life satisfaction than money, sex, or even children. And that comes from a Wake Forest University psychological study. Mm -hmm. So more than any of the pleasures of life, marriage actually will make you happy. Amen to that. Amen to that. We need more folks to get married. We do. Healthy marriages. And the last one, which I thought was interesting, was that birth order can influence whether a marriage succeeds or fails. We've kind of talked about this before Mm -hmm. on a previous podcast, but the highest divorce rates are when an only child marries another only child. (laughs) And the lowest divorce rate is when the oldest sister of brothers marries the youngest brother of sisters. Mm -hmm. Isn't that interesting? That hurts my head to think about that. I know, that's what I was thinking. I I kind of understand the only child thing, maybe just because you're not used to living with people sharing might be hard Attention, you. you get attention a lot and you're very close to your parents and yeah. there's so many other factors that can play into it. I understand that. Right, but the oldest sister of brothers and the youngest brother of sisters, you're in the best shape. Birth order is a big deal. It is. Mm-hmm. It really affects personality. Middle child, that's a real thing. Mm-hmm. It is. That's your marriage facts for the day. This next article is really cute. came from Huffington Post and it's called Why I Ask My Wife to Marry Me Every Day, which is this guy. This guy's got the law of pursuit down. Aww. So he's already figured it, it out. It sounds so notebooky it's already. It's so cute. It's just, marry me. <laughs> you just, just, you take your notes, Sean. You take oh. this home to Lynette <laughs> okay. because this is great advice. He says, um, he's talking about the importance of pursuit. And this guy asks his wife to marry him every day or thanks her for marrying him. And his, he's quoted as saying, every single day I make sure that my wife knows that I love being married to her. And he says that doing this requires two very important things for the health of any relationship, which is effort and commitment. But I like his take on it. He was describing the effort as fun effort versus effort that's you know Hard. causes turmoil. Yeah. yeah, and he compared it to doing an exercise that you really enjoy. Maybe you're into yoga or whatever exercise really invigorates you. You're working hard at it and you may not want to do it every day or go all the time, but it's always rewarding and you enjoy doing it. And that fun effort and applying that to your marriage helps you have a better 
marriage every day. That's great. Good articles today. And I like how they tied into the four foundational laws of marriage. I know. Imagine a relaxing, adventurous cruise among glaciers, mountains, and charming fishing villages, combined with life-changing marriage teaching from Jimmy Evans. Set sail June 29th to July 6th, 2018, on the EXO Marriage Cruise to Alaska. Unforgettable views, luxurious accommodations, and eight days of romance in one of the most scenic parts of North America. Book your stateroom now at exomarriage.com slash cruise. Thank you for tuning in to the podcast today. We've had a good time talking about the four foundational laws of marriage. Very, very important topic today. One, like I said in the beginning of the show, one of my favorite things to talk about in relationship to marriage. We have so many good things at marriage today that we give people and teach people, and my dad does a great job of instructing people in marriage. This is at the very core of his teaching. This can help any couple succeed in marriage, I believe. Yeah. I, th I think it's time for us to pursue our spouses on a greater level. I mean, and it, in my mind, I guess it's just time to do it. Like, why wait for anything else? Like mm -hmm. today, just figure out a way that you can start to pursue your spouse, prioritize it and everything else. I think it's going to be great. Mm -hmm. I think it's fantastic. Well, you know, my wife, Stephanie, and I have three kids, and uh, we had a discipline of, like, date nights and everything up mm -hmm. until the third kid. And then it just seemed like life got crazy. Mm -hmm. And uh, we still now, the priority thing, and my dad teaches this, this just last week he was talking about the four foundational laws of marriage, and I heard him say about pursuit and you know prior, priority in your marriage. And so, so many times I get busy and with work and kids, and so after 20 years of marriage, I'm still finding fault on myself yeah. and throwing the red flag whenever, uh, whenever I'm breaking these laws and whenever it happens. You know, you just tell in our home, we have a good marriage, but whenever these things happen, you just kind of, you know, just things start to get irritating, mm -hmm. get you irrit irritated a little bit more, you have more chronic conflict. Yeah, I think, not big things, but little things. Yeah, but I think it's kind of like, it goes back to the report that we were just looking at. If you're looking at four minutes a day mm -hmm. of real quality time that spouses are having with one another, I think that goes deep. I mean, it gets into this place where we have to be extremely intentional right. about preserving the integrity of our marriages. And so, um, I don't know, maybe we should look for different signs to say, hey, we've gotten away from our identity of what it is that you know, it takes to keep this marriage strong. And at that point, you get right back to it. I mean, mm -hmm. use your phone for something amazing. Plan it, schedule it, you know, mm -hmm. put down some great ideas and just start implementing it back in a relationship, you know. And applying these laws, it's practical to start immediately today. Mm -hmm. I yeah. mean, it's just something you can do. Adding one thing here or there can completely turn everything around and it's something you can start doing immediately. It's instinctive because a, a lot of times you did this in the beginning. So you have to go back to that, that right. place in the beginning where you were doing the things that you didn't even know you were doing them, yeah. but you were putting your spouse first. You were having this moment where they were the front and center of your attention yeah. and you were giving them everything that you could. Mm -hmm. You were sharing everything that you could with them. It was all about being together mm -hmm. and doing things together. And then for some reason, we all just, just instinctively change. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't yeah. think we end up even consciously understanding it, but we just kind of get selfish. We start to you know, drive ourselves yeah. to a different direction other than away from our spouse. Yeah, part of our self-sabotage is that we forget that what caused it to be fresh at the beginning was that pursuit. Mm -hmm. And so it's like we have to get back to doing the first things and it keeps it. I mean, it just almost like revitalizes it when you go back on a date or you go somewhere you haven't been before um, mm -hmm. or when you put your house just in priority or you get some of the sin out your life, right? Mm -hmm. When we, we restore that purity, it's free. It seems like it's fun, mm -hmm. you know, in the dark sometimes, but it's really not. I mean, at the end of the day, when you come out and you breathe that, you know, that sense of fresh air, it's, it's life-giving. And so we have to find ourselves getting back to doing the first things again. And all of a sudden it, it, it becomes invigorating. Mm -hmm. It helps revitalize the marriage. You know? It's good. Yeah. Well, if you're out there and you've found yourself breaking these laws, don't worry. You're, it's very normal. <laughs> it's very common. We all have yeah. done the same thing. It's, it's easy to do, but I'm telling you, if you can focus on these, if you can get yourself into a habit of understanding these principles and putting them in the, into your into your marriage, you will have a marriage that succeeds and thrives. I, I just know that the, that's the case for so many people out there that have done that. If you want to check out Marriage on the Rock, you can go to our website, marriagetoday.com forward slash store. We have all the Marriage on the Rock material there. We also have clips of our Marriage on the Rock uh, sessions from our conferences at our YouTube channel. But you can also go to xomarriage.com forward slash podcast to subscribe to this feed. And we're going to be talking a lot about 
how to have a successful relationship and marriage. Guys, great podcast today. Yeah. Make sure you guys spread the word. Like it, share it, subscribe. Yep. We want more people to know about how to have a successful marriage. Thank you so much. We do what we do to help you. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next time.